What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we'll be taking a look over here at the Bitcoin price chart and the altcoin market as we just kind of sit here waddling along after a pullback that took place at the end of last week. Last week, we were discussing the anatomy of a trading range and how this aligns with what my beliefs have been when we were finding the top of Bitcoin back in 2021. And what I've been conceptually drawing out as we went and set our new low, looking for a big move back to the top of the range to say, hey, you know what? That's typically what happens next in the anatomy of a trading range. And that, and we just end up going. This is still my grand thesis. I'll lay out other things that I'm noticing happening on the charts. But in the end, the main one that I lean back on, right? It's all a game of probabilities. What do you think is going to happen? This is usually the thing that ends up happening. But I did want to show something going on in here that reminds me a lot of what was going on in 2020 when we had already started and we're starting to really work our way out. Now, for those who are here in 2020 during this time right here, you might remember what it was like back then. People were expecting that the crash was going to come all over again. Essentially, the general consensus of the market was we were going to have ourselves another C19 sell-off happening in here. And it goes to show, and it's hard for people to remember because people say that, you know, when this happened, everybody knew the Fed was printing money. Everybody knew we were just going to go up there. But this was still just scattered with fear for many months after C19 began. And it didn't start getting fun really until we got till November. Otherwise, it was really fear riddled all throughout here. But in particular, in this moment, too, it was also very fear driven. And well, you know, I was looking at the structure of how this was happening, right? So what did we have? We had our big narrative. We had the thing that goes on and, and crushes into the lows and finds the bottom, which is C19. We work our way back up. And then just kind of looking at the structure, I'm like, man, you know, a lot of this looks familiar in here. And, you know, I'll move this over to smaller time frames too, right here. These are now four hour candles. But just looking all throughout here and what was going on as we were pulling back and well, looking at how prices have been behaving right now, as we've just been marching up after the FTX collapse ended up occurring and where we are currently. And that like, this is your pre C19 sell off location, right? And this is kind of where we pulled back to, right? No, it's not quite holding it, but that's about where we get to back over here. Notice this is your pre FTX collapse level over here, where we're getting back to right in here. And well, just, you know, look at price behavior that led up to these moments in here, right? I mean, here we are, we're looking at September of 2022. Here we are, we're looking at October of 2019. Look at how these things ended up behaving in here, acting the same until finally you go on into your catalyst capitulation. And well, you know, where we're pulling back to right now. I don't know. I noticed that yesterday and I thought that was, you know, something worth just kind of showing. Still, I like to stick with things that I'm familiar with. And my whole thought process of all of this happening in here and then accumulating all throughout down in here and then moving back to the top of the range and doing it quickly is one of these things, right? But what I'm noticing is I'm noticing similar price behavior of like what we saw during capitulation phases that took place during our last cycle happening right here in our price structure and pullback areas so far, very similar to that. So it's just something to keep an eye on right now. If we start kind of playing out like that, you know, maybe it's time to think things differently than your typical ABC in here. As now, as of now, my, my personal thoughts are still, I, I stick with this, but I did notice all of this happening in here and how all of this was playing out in here and how we were playing out at that time. And I, I remember what sentiment was like during that time period, how people got excited and were bullish and then flipped right back to bear and then stayed in bear. And uh, this whole time period was extremely bearish sentiment. I do remember that. Um, and we know we're getting just peppered right, <laughs> right now with uh, negative, negative narratives for sure. Moving on to the altcoin market, which I have here on the top, we've studied the bottoming formation that happened in 2019 and 2020. And as the Wyckoff ending came in in here with the C19 sell-off, as we were just talking about with Bitcoin, and not a whole lot to say here about the altcoin market for the trend liners. You got your trend line. And then for the 200-day moving average, you're still sitting there just holding on top of the 200-day moving average at this point. So looking for some support to come in. We know that as we were working through here, there were several pauses that had to happen in here before breakouts were ever able to happen. It's kind of funny as I'm recording right now, we're actually getting to see the CPI print just came out. 
And we'll be able to see right here if the market's going to be able to hold this 200 day moving average. A quick peek at what just happened as we watch prices move real fast on the charts. CPI month over month came in at 0.5% meeting expectations and then year over year came in at 6.4% missing expectations by 6.2. Actually covered this in a live stream yesterday that if we meet expectations of 0.5% you are not going to get a 6.2%. You would end up getting a 6.4% because this 0.5% registering here in February for January's data is going to cancel out the February reading for January's data of 2021, which was 0.6. So it would only reduce the year over year by 0.1%. So I don't know who does the math on this to think, hey, we're gonna hit 0.5, but somehow get 6.2. No, the math clearly said 6.4. So we actually met expectations and we'll see how that gets swallowed by the market. But as for the altcoin market, going through these next days, hoping to see that we can just kind of continue holding this 200 day moving average and continue to hold these lows that have been set back in here as we were able to just continue grinding our way out previously. That's what I'll be looking Looking for here as well. As for Ethereum, similar story. It's still above the 200 day moving average, which is what it was able to break through for the first time since the very beginning of 2022. So holding on top of the moving averages at this point, looking to see those continue to hold here, getting like a breakthrough all of these and getting back down to these prices down here would start to kind of make things significantly more complicated. As for right now, totally all good. Just looking to see a base start to get built here. As for XRP, not as pretty of a picture, but really the picture that we've seen just on how XRP behaves historically. We've been talking about this a lot that I wasn't really going to sit here and, and even entertain talks of when will breakouts happen for XRP so long as they do end up coming is that, you know, even in the bullish case down in here, that if you're in something like this, the current phase that you'd be in is only in something like that right here if we're even in something like that. So really just a patience game here for XRP as anticipated. Otherwise, just kind of a patience game here in the market as we're in pullback time periods. We still have the altcoin market holding on top of the 200 day moving average if it broke out of it for the first time in over a year. The story is the same for Bitcoin, but the interesting thing is whether or not these levels are actually going to end up being a hold like we saw back there in 2020. This is still my grand thesis, but I'm eyeing the behavior going on in here as we witnessed back in 2020. Otherwise, markets swallowing that CPI data, all right. And we'll just kind of keep letting this thing kind of play itself out to paint a clear picture on if this is looking like a support level that's actually gonna end up holding in here, or if this thing really starts to get itself set in motion. Obviously, Gary Gensler, the SEC, they came out and they're going after BUSD. Last week, we had them going after staking over there on Kraken. We've got that whole whirlwind going on there. We'll cover that in another video. We talked about that a lot yesterday in the markets in the morning. So we'll, we'll kind of save that for another video later in the week. I'd like to put some more in-depth thought into it and kind of reference other things going on in the market at the same time with that. But it's kind of funny, right? We were talking about how whenever a whenever this comes in here, there's going to become like ultimate fear all over again happening in the market. And sure enough, we're getting some type of narrative come in there of the out of control SEC on full blown attack on the cryptocurrency markets, right? So the timing of it is quite interesting. But otherwise, structurally, just technically from a chart perspective, everything just looks looks totally normal. So we'll keep an eye on it throughout the week to see if things start to develop, if it starts to really kind of build a support in here where we're at right now and starts looking more like a real support is coming in. Then we can start kind of maybe adding a little bit more weight to the probability of maybe this actually is going to be the bottom. We did just get through CPI. Markets are flipping green quite a bit. So we'll just see how the week ends up going, but otherwise so far so good. But on that note, I need to go ahead and start wrapping this thing up to get ready for markets in the morning because I'm about to go live. This will be released right after I go live. Otherwise, I hope that you guys are having a great day. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.